Hi there YouTubers and double enthusiasts, welcome to another servicing video from Sort 6233, the Society for the Restoration of Trains. Tonight's project as you can see is a main line, J72, it's uh, an LNER green with running number 581 and these are nice little locomotives but this one sadly isn't running very well. In my experience it normally means that the motor will have to be stripped down, cleaned and lubricated, perhaps some new brushes and it should be okay. So let's have a look at this. We'll just zoom out for a better look at the locomotive. Oops, there we go. At first glance the bodywork doesn't look too bad. It's got steps on both sides here. I'm going to turn it over. But I see in fact that these front steps are missing. Looking at the top, one of the brass whistles is missing. I think they probably picked these up from the scrap machine somewhere. Uh, buffer bar at the front, the coupler's okay, looks pretty good. The handrails, which are wire handrails, there's a nice little touch on both sides. Turning round to the back, you've got another wire handrail, nice buffer bar, but the back coupler seems to be broken. In fact, you turn round to see that the casing of the coupler is there, but the coupling hook seems to be missing. Again, a scrap machine should provide a replacement. Okay, so let's uh, try and dismantle this. Uh, underneath, you have four screws. One at the front, one at the back. These serve a double purpose. They hold on the couplers and they also attach the chassis to the body shell. So, taking this one out, and then gently ease off the coupler, same at the rear. The screw at the rear is a much shorter screw than the one we took out the front, so by remembering things like this, it's easier to replace, and then just Remove what's left of the plastic coupler. And that should free the body shell. Just ease it away. Now, I know traditionally these are very neat fit, so you have to kind of easily maneuver, gently maneuver. Um, it's mainly because the top half of the chassis fits into the cabin, so it's a case of trying to manipulate it in such a way that it will easily slide out. As you may have realised, I stopped the recording and I very carefully manoeuvred the chassis out. Um, because I didn't want to embarrass myself on camera. Um, so here I have the motor for the main line, a uh, split chassis, and these connect directly to the wheels through the axles. And the axles themselves uh, fit into a plastic former, and these often come loose and they need to be reset. And I find that a wee bit of super glue does wonders. So once I'm ready to put it all back together again, I'll get them quartered up and uh, get them glued and that should hold them. Right, so now I've got the motor out. My next task is to see if I can get the motor to run. If I hold it this way, the this side here has got no motor access, but these two screws work onto the poles. So I'm going to apply power across the screws 
and see if I can get any sign of life there and there. And at this point I can find there's not a lot happening. In my experience this normally means <coughs> that the mechanism just needs a good deal of lubrication. When dismantling the chassis the two halves are held together by a screw on each side and by two screws here that provide the power feed from one half of the chassis to a pulling motor. This screw here is usually uh, tampered proofed with that red nail varnishy type stuff that you can't get into so I find it quite difficult to remove that but fortunately if you remove this one and this screw the two halves should separate so let's see if that happens this is just a simple self tapper screw which holds this onto a plastic former and this one is a threaded screw which is quite lengthy and you have to be careful because this holds the plate onto the pole of the motor now these two halves should just quite simply prise apart revealing the gearing underneath and there we have the screw that I told you about being tamper proof connects to a brass uh, boss which will fit through here and connect to the plate the screw had just removed. I'll just take the gears off, put them aside and we'll have a look at the motor. I'm going to remove this other screw which you should find is a shorter uh, threaded screw which releases the motor plate and be careful that the brush springs don't get lost and here I can see another of the brushes there and the other brush is in here when I'm reassembling I will be removing these two plates, putting it back on, inserting the brushes and then the springs. While I'm waiting for this to be built up I shall probably order a set of springs and replace, uh, sorry, the brushes and replace them. You can see this is needing quite a good clean out. My memory tells me that I should be able to release the gear wheel. But no, no I don't. The next bit, I've done a number of times on different types of motors. I'm going to clean the commutator, replace the brushes, then build it back up again. I realised I'd made a mistake. Nope, take two. I realised I'd made a mistake leaving the screw in this part of the chassis. Um, so, working from the other side, I removed the nut and the screw, which was actually gunged up with security varnish, which is why I couldn't turn it. So, cleaned all that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this 
into the this half of the motor chassis. It sits into a hex space and it should sink down. So that becomes a retaining nut for the spring the brush spring plate. Not too tight. And this now should allow me to try my motor again. He said. So in there and in there. This allows me to see the motor. It's certainly going a lot freer and it's not squeaking. So now I'm going to insert the main, uh, sorry, the little idler, which goes in there with a little bit of oil on it. And now for the main idler, which sits in between the motor cam and the drive gear. And now this should work. To try to, oops, it's jamming up. Wonder why. Hmm. And there we have back to square one. It seems to work in reverse. What if I put it in this way? It's not behaving. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Much freer, less noisy. So it just shows you what a good clean and lubrication can do for a model locomotive. Now I'm ready to assemble the chassis. So these are the two separator plates which fit in here and here. Now to take the other half of the chassis. I don't think there's any kind of lubricant. That's a retaining boss. So I think just a little touch of lubrication on there. Because that will actually just apply pressure to the centre here, so that won't allow it to run smoothly. Uh, there looks as if there's been a bit of rubbing here. Oh, sorry, I missed the camera there. A bit of rubbing there from one of the gears. So, you know, it's been working its way loose for a while. Let's just see how that goes. I'll maybe just um, apply a bit of oil there as well, because if it's going to rub, let's try and give it a bit of freedom. Okay, so let's set this on here and make sure it's seated properly here and here. And uh, yep, there we go. <coughs> Looks all right. My first task will be to insert the screws here, which will hold the chassis. So I've got them in this little box. And are there any differences? I can't see much. So, one in here. And one diametrically opposite. 
and I'm hoping that by this stage I should be able to get the motor to run by simply applying power to the chassis. He said, ah, no, because I haven't made the full connection yet. Aha! I need this screw in here to draw power through into the motor. help. So, if my theory is correct, this should work. <laughs> oh me. Working from there, not from there, the way I know. Working from there, not from there. And there we have it, from the chassis plates, through the screw, to the motor, and I can show you I'm only really on half power, so let me just hook this up, one, hook it up, one in there, one in there, and I'll just tweak the power, putting it up a wee bit. There we go, and slow it down and into reverse. Quite low power, it's working off load. And there we are. Yeah! Nice! Nice, nice. Right, that's the chassis working. Let's have a look at the wheels. As I mentioned earlier, each axle consists of a plastic former and the former itself trains to crack. Now, I'm going to Zoom in just a touch and see if we can get this to focus. You can see that crack right across the plastic former, which means that the wheels are free to rotate. Now the arrangement in this is that these wheels should be so tight that when they're quartered, when the manufacturer whoops, then they should stay like that. But these wheels have a tendency then to operate independently. This doesn't seem to be too bad. The wheels are difficult to move, but they're coming out. So it means that if there's any friction in one wheel or the other, then it can tend to be held back and the other wheel trying to keep going. So eventually what happens is the wheels go out of quarter. And the linkage on these main lines is two piece. Let me just come out a wee bit more. The linkage is two piece. And if you've ever seen them perhaps on eBay, you find that the linkage kind of looks like that. Because the wheels are going out of quarter and they're not staying in sync. So uh, if you get a G. 72 with the linkage out of quarter then you will know you're going to have to repair these plastic formers and uh, get them back into quarter again. I tend to use super glue which means I have to leave it overnight at least. Um, so if I do this tonight uh, I probably won't be able to pick it up for another few days, so I'll give it time to set. It means separating the wheel assemblies. These ones are quite firm, so I'm just going to leave them, leave well alone. But these two definitely 
need to be removed. Now, these are pins which are prized out and pushed in. And in order to give me more freedom to work, I will probably remove them later on. So I'm going to take the plastic former out from the drive wheel and from the front drive wheel. Whoops. I'm going to apply some super glue, fit them back on, get them quartered and then leave them to set. So when I've got all that done, I'll come back to you and show you the results and hopefully we get a nice little LMER J72 up and running. So, see you in a wee while folks. Take care for now. Bye. Well, I've left my three uh, driving wheel axles uh, to set for a couple of days. So let's have a wee look at them and see how well they've welded. This is going to be the main dragon wheel to the cog. I'm trying to twist them and they're as solid as a rock. Although this one, earlier on, seemed to be firm enough, I actually spotted a little crack in one part of the uh, the, act, the former just there so I put a wee bit of glue in here as well and that's quite solid and in the third axle we had a crack right across which I showed you and now I've glued them and they are as solid as you'll get so uh, with that I think we can start to rebuild our chassis, I'll just bring it in um, quick check on the motor because we've been well since I, I looked at it a couple of days so I've got power on, try the chassis and there's a the motor starting right away that's good so I'll just apply power to both sides and I'll just um, control it from the power supply can you see the gears there? there we go so turning it right down, there we go, and then in the other direction. Of course it's off load at the moment and therefore it doesn't take much to get it going, but it shows that the motor and the gearing is running fairly freely. Whereas previously it took a bit of effort. <coughs> okay. Uh, I checked that the wheels have been quartered and they seem to be pretty good. The main drive gear goes in with the driving axle uh, to this plate. I'm going in the fact that the, I've kept these con rods in the place in the centre wheel and with these con rods this little pip should go to the top so as we're upside down these are going to sit in like so and the third axle is going to sit in there when they're quartered it doesn't matter which way around they go the, uh, the wheels will still line up being quartered for example as I look at this you can see this at 6 o'clock, and when I turn it round, it looks like 3 o'clock. So if I turn it upside down, I make this look like 6 o'clock, and turn it round, whoops, then it still looks like 3 o'clock. So there's no kind of upside down aspect of that. At this point, uh, I'm going to uh, attach the, the securing plate, which has a recess for the toothed gear, so that sits in there, 
and it means that you don't need to worry about which way around it goes. It's quite a tight fit, which is good, but that should just click in there, and that means that the wheels are free to go. And then I can assemble the coin rods. Now, there are a couple of little screws to hold the plate in place. Now these are screwing into those little plastic uh, connector pieces that went between the two metal plates of the motor, or poles of the motor. <coughs> Before I take this any further, I'm going to see that the power works from the wheels, because that's what's going to happen. The power will go to the wheels, which then goes by contact through the wheels into the chassis and then along to the motor. So turn my power up a little bit and apply it to here and you can see that the driving wheels are rotating. And in reverse. And not working with that pair. But it is working with the drive pair. Goes from applying friction to a bit of power, and you can see that it's working from here and from here. Should be working from there as well. But I think that won't be a big problem. No. These are the drive wheels, so I'm just going to align the middle wheel. Seems to be jamming, there we go. Should be able to rotate. There we go. So, and insert the fixing pin, and this will be, will need a reasonably hefty bit of pressure to squeeze it into a very tight fitting hole. Then with the front drive wheel, it should line up perfectly also. And then put in another retaining pin. Again, nice little bit of pressure in so. Should hold it. And turning to this side as well, the same process. Very, very tight fitting, so it's a, a balance between applying pressure 
and just let it go as far as it can. And the last one. Wheels are perfectly in line. Okay, this is a big crucial test, folks. It's a bit that it's almost scary. And that is, we've got this stage where you think everything's done, doesn't work. Well, let's have a wee look and see. I'm actually going to start from the engine, sorry, from the motor, because then I know I can work back the way. Go from here and here, and it's starting to work. Trying to work. Give it just a bit more juice. It might be <coughs> need a little bit of lubrication. Although I thought I'd try to to lubricate it as I went along. That's it, just needs a wee bit of time to get started. Come on, you get your nearly there. Oh dear, and look what's happened. Gone out to sink again. So it might be the repair wasn't a success. That is That is, yeah, that wheel is rotating. Well, that didn't work. That didn't work. I'd made two mistakes. The first mistake was that when I first assembled this particular axle, which is the geared axle, I found that the wheels weren't entirely pushed in on the axle and I foolishly decided to enclose them by a strong grip. I actually used a mini vise to just squeeze them together it seemed to hold all right, but I should have realised that it had broken the cohesion between the wheel and the former. As far as I can tell, it's all right now. The other mistake I made was when I first mentioned this axle, I said that although the wheels are quite solid, I actually applied a little bit of glue I took the wheels off and applied a little bit of glue and what I didn't realise was that the glue just about here had formed a little bubble so that it made it difficult for the wheel to rotate, to rotate in the channel in the chassis, these channels here, so that it wasn't turning freely and also it wasn't providing good electrical conduct. So I cleaned all that away and I think we should find at this point that the wheels now provide good contact, contact well, you can't see that can you, to the motor. So from the seg centre uh, set of wheels there is good contact and they rotate uh, a lot more freely. So having corrected those two mistakes, I'm now going to try and rebuild 
DJ72 and we'll see how it works then. I've now rebuilt the chassis exactly the same as I did before, so I'm going to test it. Uh, starting off with direct contact across the motor. That looks pretty good. Try it from the wheels. And the rear driving wheels. Oh, they don't seem to be as responsive. But at least working. So let's bring in the rolling road and see if we can get a good response. Here and here. My contacts are at the end you can't see, so I'm just going to plug here and here. I'm rolling roads on, now see if I can get these to work. Certainly trying. My rolling road is not the best, I keep seeing that, I've been seeing it for years. I've never really got around to doing anything about it. Um, right, but I think it's definitely working. Come on. There we go. Try the other way. Alright, so at this point I'll thank you all for watching and ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so. And that leads to another point. Thank you to all those who are subscribing. And I have to confess we're getting a lot of favourable comments. So I hope that my videos are helping those who have got similar problems and making use of Please let me know. And if something I'm doing that you think I'm wrong, I'd love to hear from you because I want to keep developing this aspect of the hobby. So until later on, keep watching YouTube and bye for now.